and Jamshedpur have won the Hero ISL. Hyderabad are the Hero of Indian Super League champions. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Suyash, and I welcome you to this Derby Day discussion special of the Let's Football Live Show. But right at the top of the show, I want to make a public service announcement. There has been a bit of a change in our lineup. You see, we were trying our best to get Saeed Rahim Nabi to regale us with stories uh, of past and of yore. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to join us due to some technical difficulties. But hang on, we have an equally entertaining personality. If Nabi was entertaining on the field. This man is entertaining off it, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. Because if you don't by now, I will welcome ex Mohan Bagan player Darren Caldera and our very own Sir Paul Maysfield to the Let's Football Live Show. <laughs> Paul, you are looking a little bit different this week. I was expecting uh, someone looking like Nabi, but uh, yeah, that you've got uh, a few shades fairer. I tried though. I tried. I went and played golf today, so I was out in the hot sun. So you know, I've caught a bit of a tan. I'm a little bit red, but uh, no, we had, we had a little bit of fun. We had a little bit of fun. It's a shame that Nabi couldn't be here because I mean, I'd love to have listened to to the stories that he's got to tell and that you know that this rivalry that goes back many, 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 many years. And you know, Darren's fortunate to have uh, played in it and to be able to talk about this and look ahead to what will be an epic encounter. We're hearing reports; everything's already sold out. It, it's 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 fantastic. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, May it's a pleasure as always, Darren. Let's start the episode with a bit of an ode to Saeed Rahim Nabi because he's not able to join us today. Uh, what a versatile player he was, right? I remember seeing him play midfield when I started watching football. By the time he finished his career, it was full back, it was the defense, it was uh, as a forward on occasion when the team needed it. Absolutely fantastic, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, what a player, Nabi. He was one of the, you know one of the most versatile players at that point in Indian football. Like you mentioned, has played left back, left wing, played on the right wing as well. Played as a striker up front when they needed goals. And yeah. uh, you know, for, for someone who wasn't very very tall, he had a great leap. So he was really good yeah. in the air as well. And uh, you know, I was fortunate to actually share the dressing room with him uh, at Mumbai FC in the I League, and there's so much to learn from him as well. And what a player! Uh, I remember at some point he won the EIFF Player of the Year as well. So yeah, great servant to Indian football, and he is going to be missed on the show. But let's not forget, we got Paul Maysfield. Uh, apart from those uh, dodgy knees, I think he's a very able replacement. Yeah, I, I played with Nabi. Let me tell you, we, we played a five-a-side game a couple of years back uh, down at Cooperage one day, where all the talent had got together to have a game of football. And I can tell you now, I mean, he still had it then. He, he's running rings around all of us. So you know, we had to pull a shirt here and there to try and stop him. But you know, a wonderful, wonderful player. You know, Mace, he would have been used to that uh, just going by the number of Kolkata derbies he played over his career. Shirt pulling is is the least of people's worries on the football pitch <laughs> when you're playing uh, a Kolkata derby. So on that note, uh, Darren, let me just get uh, you straight in over here. Look, the Kolkata derby, everyone who's a part of uh, Kolkata and who's been a part of Kolkata, who has the city in their, in their fabric, knows exactly what the significance of the Kolkata derby is. But for you who played for the season uh, at Mohan Bagan in the 2018-19 season, uh, as an outsider, so to speak, because you're not from the city, what initially told you that this game is something special, that it's more than just a game? How does the environment and atmosphere around the city change in the build-up to a Kolkata derby? Can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, I remember like you know, growing up as a as a footballer, you know, early years in my career, a lot of my the senior players would talk about the Kolkata derby. Some of them who played for the big. Uh, you know the big two clubs, and uh, they kept saying it's one of those games where, as a footballer, you have to experience that game. And and fortunately, you know, I I got a chance to play in a Kolkata derby. I remember when I signed for Mohan Bagan when I joined the club initially. Uh, you know, we were preparing for the the, the Kolkata League, and you had uh, you know, of course, when the fixtures were out. As soon as the fixtures were out, I remember a couple of the Bengali players uh, having a chat about the Kolkata derby and saying, "Listen, you got to be ready for this game, whatever." Whatever is going on, whatever the situation is, if you're unfit, if you've got an injury, you just got to get fit in time for this game. Yeah. And you don't, you don't really understand it as well a couple of months prior, but a week or two before the game, you can suddenly just see the change in the city. Uh, you know, you, you walk around the streets. I remember just close to my place, there was this vegetable vendor and he called me once aside, I think a week before the derby and he started giving me tactical advice on the derby and how I should be playing and how I should be passing the ball to Sony Nori. And I was a bit taken aback. But it's one of those things, every single Bengali yeah. in Kolkata has an opinion and everybody have eyes on this particular game. It's, it's, it's bragging rights. You know, everything that you've done, 
before in the season if you lost yeah. five games prior to that it's fine as long as you can win that kolkata derby it's such an important game yeah. and and i realize that coming from outside uh, you know you don't feel it as much you don't know it beforehand but you know two weeks prior with the media with the people around everybody just constantly talking about the derby it's just a different feeling a different air about this game yeah uh, mace what do you remember about covering the kolkata derby for the first time and uh, do you remember when it was and what did you observe because you've seen many derbies throughout your playing career as well as your career as an expert uh, what stands out about the kolkata derby share volume share number and everything Darren's just mentioned there and more um the first one obviously when it was 80 came on began a couple of seasons ago and they came in that was the one that we covered at tilak and that was a it was a fantastic build up the the whole all the shows were built around uh, around the derby so it was fantastic but having come and been here so many times before i'm fortunate enough to have watched them on tv now you don't get the same sort of feeling you would do if you're on the pitch or you're actually there at the stadium but you can see from the passion you can see from the desire all the newspapers particularly over there in bengal are talking about that <laughs> game that they're not interested in anything else and i think it, it, it's testament it's like nearly 100 years of of, of derbies that they've played which is absolutely phenomenal i mean you're talking about real history real heritage and you're talking about a huge rivalry and darren's yeah. right i mean the fans want to have their say um you know i've been in involved in in certain derbies throughout throughout the right world where i played not as big don't get me wrong but there is an edge and people come up to you in the street and just say don't care if we get relegated just beat them and that is how much it means to 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 people to get yeah. one over and get those bragging rights against your family members your mates yeah. the people you work with you know families are divided some 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 are some are golden red you know and 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 some are maroon and green and, and yeah. they're in the same family and yeah. that actually happens so you just want to be able to go to bed at night and say to your brother yep we beat you you good luck next time but you know i've got the bragging rights now till the next time we play Yeah, and there seems to be a bit of a, if I could use the word, a brotherhood between the uh, the players, especially the Indian players, of both sets of teams, because they seem to know each other quite a bit. You won't you won't find uh, an occasion where, uh, and Darren, you can correct me if I'm wrong over here, but there does seem to be a great familiarity between both sets of players in that sense. When the derby week approaches, right? How does the equation between the players change? Is there a bit of needle? Because you've experienced it yourself. uh unka vyavahar kaise badalta hai as we say in hindi uh, how how do they how do they you know interact with each other and just from yeah, a human I, point of I mean, view you know a lot of the players of course yeah, i mean you, you know a lot of the players in the league at some point you probably been teammates with them and you know you know different teams and but when you in the derby is just different i'm telling you it's 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 one of those things where i've never seen a management of the team the fans and so many other people get so involved in a match and they create that sort of a buzz and pressure on that particular game i'm talking about the media as well you know leading up to that game every single session of you know one of the kolkata clubs is always covered by the media you'll find in the local bengali channels in the evening as right. well but you know a week or two before the derby you'll have around 20 probably media houses uh, you know recording every single training session and you know training session is on basically it's live the data on, on on news channels and if you're having a bad training session the fans know that you're having a bad training session so <laughs> yeah already prior to a derby that, they yeah. probably think you should not be starting it's one of those is, things is is this the is this the most high pressure game that exists in indian football as far as pressure on the shoulders of a player is easy. concerned easy easy like yeah. you, you speak to any football who's probably played a uh, kolkata derby and they'll tell you the same there's no there's you don't have the similar sort of pressure you could be playing a final of a particular tournament or you could be playing a you know a, a league game in which is a must win game if you want to qualify but yeah. nothing comes comes close to the derby and you know you can you can go from a hero to a zero in a matter of seconds there's so much of pressure every single pass you make sometimes on the pitch and if it goes wrong probably you can hear the moans from the yeah, fans you know yeah. and they're constantly behind you it, it's it's so difficult it's so important in, my, in in these games to settle in in the first 10 or 15 minutes because if you start a derby making a couple of miss passes is just it's so difficult to recover from that uh, yeah. you know i've seen a couple of players crumble under that sort of pressure as well so this sort of a game is 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 high pressure yeah yeah uh, mace we've also seen a number of players across uh, both the clubs cross over and it's quite unique in that sense because when you talk about a derby you for example hardly see players from 
uh, Liverpool go to Man United or Man United go to Liverpool. And uh, there have been the odd occasion, of course. But the frequency with which it happens in the Kolkata clubs is something, uh, would you call that a unique? And could you explain the nature of that uh, in the sense, how, how does it how does it work? But, I mean, it is unique to an extent because, like you say, very, very few players do cross over yeah. and go and do that. I mean, I've, I've heard stories about the Calcutta derby, this, that and the other, and the tokens which players used to have to hold on to. And the clubs held the tokens. And, you know, there's been shenanigans trying to get players to go and join Tell the different more. clubs. Tell us more. <laughs> it's only hearsay. It's only what I've told. I mean, of like course. players have turned up at train stations. And one of the other clubs has turned up and met them, taken the token off them and said, right, now will you play for us and not them? So, I, I mean, these sort of things happen because of that history and that rivalry. They just want to, they want the best. So if you're performing well, and just say, I'm just going to say, at East, East Bengal, you know, if the Mariners then turn around the next season and say, we need to be stronger, we're going to go and get you. So they will go out and get him to ensure that he's playing for them. Because what it does is it strengthens them and it weakens East Bengal and, and vice versa. I only just use that as a, as a, as an analogy, you know, just to be able yeah. to, to 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 lay down that marker. Yeah, I've not, I've not seen it anywhere else, in, in particularly in Europe. It doesn't happen much in Europe. Yeah. yeah, but when you do go to Asia, it is slightly different. The league budgets it comes down a lot to budgets as well. And then, you know, if if you know if Mombagan had a bigger budget, they would go and yeah. get the best players. The following yeah. year, maybe East Bengal was saving money and they've got a bigger budget the next year. So yeah. they just go and get the best players and the players will go and play. And yeah. one of the reasons, as Darren's mentioned, forget about the other 18 games, is to yeah. play in that derby. Because yeah. to yeah. have that on your CV and to tick that box, you know, it, it's it, yeah. it's phenomenal. I remember one of, one of there was a there was a guy who worked on um, Fox, Fox Sports and he was a referee as well. And he actually came across and refereed the Calcutta Derby right. once. And he, he said to yeah. me, he said, oh, what that? He said, just couldn't hear anything. He said, yeah. the communication tools yeah. that we use as referees, he said, yeah. he said they, were, they, were, they were just redundant. He said, I had yeah. to physically go across to ensure that we were making the right decisions. He said, yeah. you've never, ever witnessed anything like it in your life. Yeah, no, that's absolutely insane. Uh, Darren, so you must have come across a lot of these players who've played for both clubs in your playing career. Any stories from them about what it was like when they switched over? Uh, was I mean, I can't imagine that the reception at, at the at the previous club could be a could be a good one. But the unique nature of the derby is such that even when you're playing in it, whether you've played for either team before, you don't have a sense that you're playing in the away game because you're stay, playing in the same stadium. You're playing in front of uh, the, the same uh, Bengali populace, but they're just wearing a different color. So, any encounters with players and any stories that they've told you about how it was when they switched over? No, I mean, it would have been great if he had Nabi here because he's he's one of those players who's actually switched. So I remember Under. one of the derbies as well uh, when when Nabi was playing, and uh, if I'm not wrong, I remember the fans. Uh, I think there was footwear thrown at him, a couple of slippers and and shoes thrown at him. There was the more than there. footwear thrown at him. Uh, there was one <laughs> one occasion where uh, where he got hit, unfortunately, and the derby had to be called off. We'll come to that in a bit, yeah. But continue, Darren, yeah. Yeah, but you, you've had so many stories this way. You know, a couple of them. Personally, as well, I remember one of the, the, the derbies that I played when we were on the losing side it was, I cannot tell you how difficult it was to actually exit the stadium uh, after that. I remember when we lost and I was heading back into the dressing room, getting from one pitch, like just going down the tunnel, you could hear so many things being said from the fans. A good thing is I didn't understand Bengali, so that also helped. But a few things that they say in English and you can understand and you don't really... You know, those sort of insults, but that's what it is. You know, it's that sort of a game. It's that difficult. And then when you have to exit the stadium, it's really difficult because you've got a lot of fans, you know, thousands of fans are still on yeah. the streets. So, you know, the, you've got the winners, obviously, parading on top of trucks and buses and just enjoying, yeah. but you've got the, the fans of a losing team probably waiting outside to, you know, hurl abuses at the team bus. And uh, <laughs> I remember living really close to the stadium as well in, in Salt Lake. So, I remember trying to get back home after that and catch my car or cab and get back home. And, you know, the fans saw you. And then I remember hearing so many things like, Caldera, go back. And, you know, you need to leave the club and go to another club and things like that. And you hear all sorts of things. And it is difficult. But, you know, you, you ask any player, this is the sort of thing that you, 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 you basically yeah. love the sort of pressure. You thrive on this sort of pressure. It reminds yeah. you that you are a professional footballer. It reminds you that you've got a moral obligation to give everything on the pitch. It keeps you on your toes. 
and it's it's again like i said like uh, you know it's it's just one of those games you have to yeah. have to experience as a footballer at some point and there's so many stories everybody who's played a kolkata derby at some point i'm sure yeah. they've got you know so many unreal stories whether they've been on the winning side or the losing side it's just unreal yeah. Darren, is there a moment that stands out for you when you played the Kolkata derby? Does the inner kid come out? Do you, for example, remember uh, an instance on the pitch which you still remember that I made this move and it resulted in this? Do pros also also remember things like that? It was an own goal. It was an own goal. <laughs> let, no, let, him let him speak. Let him speak. I remember this. I remember this really well. The first time, uh, you know, stepping out of the tunnel. You know, you know how Salt Lake is, right? You come from underground and you step out and you can hear all the fans. Cheering. That was when we were getting out for a warm up. So then you felt like, okay, this is the Kolkata derby. And I remember how that game started. The first pass I received, I actually stepped over the ball. I slipped and I fell. I remember. Oh, no. Bro. And as soon as I did that, I could hear thousands of fans going like, ooh, like you know, like what are you doing? And that was my <laughs> start to a derby. And I remember I was like, oh man, like what am I doing? And I quickly. Got back. I'm going to try to keep it simple and just get a pass. Through. So I remember <laughs> next couple of passes. I was like, I'm not even going to try anything difficult. I just want to get the ball down and pass it to the man closest to me. And also at the same time, I remember once getting clattered by the goalkeeper. I think it was uh, Shilton Paul in goal, if I'm not wrong. Right. And right. he clattered into me and turned around, and I was pissed because I was like, at least give me a call. But he turned, he was looking at me saying, I called. Why aren't you listening to me? So that, that's when I realized. How loud it is in the stadium! You can't hear each other. So you've yeah. got players saying, you know, man on your left, and you know, turn right, but you're on your own. I'm telling you, at that moment, you cannot hear a single call because the fans are so so loud yeah. in the stadium. No, that's fascinating, and that's important to mention because Mace, this is going to be the first Kolkata derby in the Hero ISL that will be played in front of fans at the VYBK Stadium. In that context, that's there, of course. That's uh, something to to uh, look forward to. But as far as East Bengal FC is concerned, and you know how they're performing of late, would you call this the most competitive derby that we have in the offing uh, in in the in the time that both teams have been part of the Hero ISL? Simply because of how East Bengal FC are faring these days. Yes, I would I would totally agree with that. I think they struggled the the first couple of seasons. You turn around and look at the time that Robbie Fowler had to get his side ready to to go out there and perform. The players that they got in was very very late. Um, and it's very, very hard to get a cohesive unit then. It happened the following season as well, where it was very, very late, where the team got assembled and amassed. Whereas this year, they've actually turned around and they've done their business early doors. They've done it a little bit earlier. They've, you know, they've brought in someone who knows Indian football in Stephen Constantine, who knows how to grind out results because that's what he does. He, he knows how to get results from certain teams. Took him a little while to find his balance, to find the side that he wanted to play to get that 11 on the pitch that could work. And I think he's fallen upon it now. I really do. That's why I, I, I'm so eagerly looking forward to this. Purely and simply from the fact that, you know, AT came on, began in the last game against Curla Blasters, didn't turn up for 20 minutes. Hmm. But let me just say that we're magnificent after that. East Bengal, on the other hand, have just gone from strength to strength to strength. And they're getting better and stronger as each game comes. So it's an absolute intriguing mouth-watering fixture that we should have with both sides capable of winning because if the pressure like Darren said if the pressure starts to get to the players and it does particularly yeah. some of the younger players that you know they're never going to have experienced this before some of them have never played in front of crowds up until this season when you've got 60, 80, 100,000 people going absolutely mental that is a different pressure in itself and Darren's right When I, I, I feel for him because a similar thing happened to me as well when you make that mistake, the very first mistake that you receive a ball in front of a you know a huge attendance, all you want to do then is, is don't give me the ball for a minute, right? Okay, now give it to me, and you just keep a five yard simple pass. You keep things as simple as you can because otherwise, you know these guys are all going to get on your back, and that's when people do crumble, unfortunately. But this one, this one's wide open for me. Yeah, Darren. What do you what do you say to that? I mean, ATK Mohan Bagan uh, weren't at the races for twenty minutes, like me said. Uh, but how do you see them turning up to this derby? Yeah, Mesa's Mesa's spot on. Honestly, if you look at the last last two seasons, especially uh, you know the if you look at the Kolkata derby, especially it, it kind of yeah. got over in the first half itself. You know, ATK Mohan Bagan were clear winners in the first half. They were just so dominant all over the pitch, and and Mesa's right. They, you know, the preparation wasn't good. Preseason was late. Uh, 
but uh, you know this is a, a completely different season they've had a decent a decent preseason i would say they've played the duran cup as well already so that's a plus point and constantine yes he's had, he's had a slow start to the league the first two games they didn't they didn't seem up to up to the races but you could see in the last game i think he's finally getting his 11 right he's finally getting the formation the personnel right uh, so i think that's working for him but i've seen this before in kolkata derbies over the years you know the current form does not matter you know when it comes to kolkata derby sometimes it's on your day i've seen teams uh, you know probably a mohan bagan side doing a lot better uh, in the league and then suddenly on the kolkata derby they just taken you know torn torn apart that's what happened so it's on the day it's so important but the east bengal side are looking different they look they're playing they've got some sort of confidence especially after beating north east united they you know finally they look like a side who can you know grind out results defensively if they can keep it tight because atk mohan bagan you see the kind of attack they do have Uh, they somehow, you know, withstood that pressure against Kerala mm-hmm. Blasters. They went a goal down. When they went a goal down, I thought it was game over. I thought they'd probably lose two or three nil. But you know, they somehow managed to just stay in the game, claw their way back, and then in that second half, they absolutely decimated Kerala Blasters. So yeah. it's going to be a very close derby. It's going to be the closest derby, uh, you know, in the Hero Isle that we've had so far, definitely. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be a, an absolutely, you know, fascinating clash. Yeah, you know we're going to play a game of polar opinions here, guys, because I do know that uh, Mace, you and uh, Darren don't see eye to eye on a lot of things from a footballing point of view, and we've seen that <laughs> on air a few times uh, through your discussions in the time that you've known each other. What is the one derby sort of opinion that you guys fundamentally disagree on? Oh, and Mace, you want, you want to take what, that? What, what a question that is! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's a see, see, this, all that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that, it's, it, I don't think we've actually had a major falling out over the derby. I, I think it, it's decisions, yeah. it's incidents, it, it might be things that have happened. You know, obviously and clearly it was a penalty, and Darren says no. Then obviously Darren's wrong. You know, but that, that's how it is. But you know, and like, like the other way, oh, if a, ta- a challenge or a tackle, yeah. well, if a challenge or a tackle goes in, and Darren says, you know, that's never been a foul, and I say yes, it is a foul, and the referee doesn't give it. Then I was wrong. So it, it works both ways. But I mean, we're, we're both intrigued. I think this is the this is the key element, and and the conversation and the chats we had, particularly the last couple of seasons as well. It's just geared up about the pressure. Now, this is the one thing that we will absolutely agree on: the amount of pressure on these players going into that ninety minutes. They'll have never experienced anything like that before. Even if they've played derbies before, that they'll never experience. They're never going to have experienced it before because it's the hero I sell. It's the first time at the Salt Lake where they will be going out there and wearing their colours, wearing that pride, and you know, it's all about who can handle the pressure. Yeah, whichever exactly. side handles the pressure best. The younger players, if one or two of them start making mistakes, these senior pros need to get hold of them and say, "Come on, let's get on with it and let's go again." But it's this is just purely and simply about pressure this time. Yeah, Darren, has it ever happened with you where you were playing a big game and then? Maybe a senior pro came up to you and told you to relax. Do you ever remember something like this happening in your career where you really look back at that and think that, "Wow, I remember what that player did for me that day, and I will forever have uh, respect for him for that." Yeah, there've been a, a couple of them, to be honest. Uh, over the years, uh, you know, I can I remember when I was starting out as well as a youngster. I remember you know a few senior players like your Venkatesh and Mahesh Kavlis and you know Khalid Jamil having uh, you know conversations with me about. Uh, you know certain things that i need to do on the pitch especially when i you know since you're starting off you don't want to try anything fancy like mace mentioned about you always want to keep it simple when you're starting off you know as as simple as possible i think there have been moments as well throughout my career i've had the you know players like bardo beche uh, asoni nodi uh, you know like a robbie keen as well having chats with me during the game saying you know I, when you have these moments maybe you feel like okay you made a couple of missed passes not working or they come and put their shoulder around you and be like you seem relaxed you get the ball just look for me these are the kind of pros you need at some point you know yeah. the kind of support that you need uh, during the game at times where uh, yeah. you know you remember these small details so i remember these sort of players especially in certain games yeah. when you feel like it's not working out for you they always quickly there's if there's a set piece or something like that they quickly come and have a chat with you and be like you seem just relax just calm down if you get the ball you see yeah. you feel this pass me the ball I'll take care of the rest. So these yeah. this, yeah. you know, minor details, uh, which I'm sure Mace must have experienced in his career as well. When you've got, you know, the, the senior players and they come in, uh, it's just a small gesture. You know, it doesn't seem a lot when you 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 say it right now. But when you're on the pitch, and if it's not working out for you, and if you've got, 
you know, yeah. character like a Bardo Bache or a Robbie Keane or Sonny Nori coming in, you know, telling you, listen, just relax, I've, I've got this, you know, just pass me the ball. Yeah. You know, it matters so much in that moment. Yeah, sometimes I feel like that with Mace, but off the pitch, of course. Uh, you know that same sentiment, same feeling. <laughs> Cheers, Mace. You know, you know that uh, you know that uh, FIFA reference where at the end of a replay, Jeff Reeves just goes, "Cheers, Jeff." So that's what I want to say to you, Mace. <laughs> Cheers, Jeff. Uh, right on, uh, gentlemen. We are nearing the end of the show, and I would normally ask you to do your predictions for the derby, but we're going to put a bit of a twist on this this time. Mace, you've spoken about what the difference in the game might be, but if I was to ask each of you. In this uh, East Bengal FC side and in this ATK Mohan Bagan side, who's the weak link? Is is there a weak link at all uh, that that they are going to sort of uh, maybe maybe have to pay special attention on? I know I'm I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here, but uh, <laughs> you're being yeah, a bit harsh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think. I no, think... but is there okay? Let's make it. Is there a general weak link that the teams uh, kind yeah, of have? Yes, Not sorry. singling out a player. But yeah. just just as a as a trend within yeah. the team. Yeah, yes, there is. When the games that have been played, I think we've seen and weaknesses have been addressed by both coaches. So the question is: is will they fall back into those? Sometimes when AT came on, began play with that three at the back, they are exposed because if you're playing Ashik and Liston and things like that, they're going to be bombing forwards. They've got a lot of pace going down there, so you can get little pockets and little holes where you can get it at the AT came on and began side. Yeah. For for uh, East Bengal, I think it was the fullbacks. So they just weren't working. So he's brought in Jerry now to strengthen things up. Yeah. He's brought in um, what, who's he put in the right? He left some Passy out and he brought in Sir Sartak. Oh, so he's, he's got both, he's got those two in there now. Proper fullbacks. One is a right back. One is a left back. He's got two centre backs. I think Ivan Gonzalez needs to up his game a little bit. Chunnunga yeah. for me has been fantastic so far this season. So he's fallen onto it, but. If he starts to tweak and chop and change a little bit, that's where they could become undone as well. Because the running that the ATK Mombagan side can do, you Johnny Kalko bombing forwards, Hugo Bumu, you know, Petrata scoring a hat trick. They do have top draw players. So they are midfielders. So Doherty for me is going to have to play an important role to drop in there and look to kill space as well. So, I mean, yeah. the, the, there are lots and lots of little chinks in the armor, right? Only from what we've seen from both of these sides so far. But the, both coaches are addressing them. So we saw, obviously, AT came on, began to shore things up and go and do what they did to Curler Blasters. You know, we saw then what East Bengal went and did to North East United. So they, they know they're there, but can they do it under pressure? That is Darren. going to be the question. Yeah, that's your cue, Darren, over to you. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Mace. I think defensively, I think both teams uh, have problems at the moment. ATK, Mondogan especially. I mean, uh, we, we talk about the quality in midfield and going, you know, up front as well. But defensively, I, I can't see them keeping a clean sheet. Uh, that's my problem with them. Uh, uh, we saw that against, you know, every single side. They're playing really good, expansive football. It's good to watch. But you have to start keeping tight at the back, especially when you're playing with Kolkata Derby. So I think the first 10-15 minutes are important. Constantine, I think again, like Mace mentioned, I think he's finally getting his defense right. He's tried different uh, formations, he's tried, tried different personnel. But again, I, I see, I can't see East Bengal if, if they go goal down against an ATK Mohan Bagan side, the kind of quality they have, I can't see East Bengal bouncing from that and trying to get a win out of it. So I find that very mm-hmm. difficult. I think both defenses are going to be very key in this game. Um, and it's all about who's going to outscore the opponent because I can't see any side keeping a clean sheet. So, on that note, Darren, prediction time. Quickly, five seconds. Who's going to win it's this? Going to be a, this derby is going to be a lot quicker than the uh, a lot closer than the quicker ones. It's going to be a great, fascinating derby, but I'm going with ATK Mohan Bagan for a win. Okay, then. Mace, what about you? Have I got five seconds or ten like Darren? <laughs> I mean, Darren, Darren uh, cheated a little bit, so you can, a- you can do that ATK, well. ATK Mohan Bagan will win. They'll, they'll okay. just come out on top. I think the personnel on paper, they do have a very, very strong squad. And they've got depth on the bench as well that can come in and make an impact. Okay, we shall see how that plays out. But gentlemen, the derby is not the only game that we're playing on the weekend. Of course, there's a bunch of other fixtures as well. So let's just have those up on the screen and uh, we shall go through them and ask you about which is the one other fixture that you are looking forward to, Mace, apart from the derby in this coming week. Uh, I want to see the top two teams in the league at the moment, Hyderabad and Goa. So, you know, Goa, the only side with a 100% record. Hyderabad are up there. Uh, Goa, the real deal. Can they can they cause an upset? Can they go and get something from Hyderabad? 
because Hyderabad, for me, have been the best side so far that we've seen over the three rounds this season. Yeah. Dan, what about you? Yeah, I would have probably picked Hyderabad uh, as well, the Hyderabad game uh, versus FC Goa, but I'm going with Odisha and uh, BFC. I think that's that's my yeah. pick for now because I think Odisha have, are finding some sort of momentum. They're finding yeah. some sort of rhythm. Uh, they're looking like a very good side. They must have picked up a lot of confidence from that win against Kerala Blasters. And and with BSC, they are kind of struggling at the moment. Uh, you know, we, we spoke about the kind of grit and determination they're playing with. They, you know, they look solid at the back, but they're not able to keep a clean sheet. So that's their problem. And there's no point if you can't keep a clean sheet and you're not able to score goals up front. So they, they have decisions to make. I think they still need to sacrifice one of the foreign centre-backs, yeah. uh, try and play... You know, get Roy Krishna fit playing up front with Harvey and uh, Sunil Shetty. They need to find the goals, but they're coming up against an Odisha side who are flying at the moment. So that's going to be a great team. Absolutely. But all lies, gentlemen, on the derby. Mace, I will be seeing you over there. And uh, hopefully, we make Dan a little jealous by with a little FaceTime call when we, when we yeah. see each other, hopefully. But uh, thank you for sharing your views, guys. Been an absolute pleasure. And uh, Mace, you've been a very, very able deputy in the absence of uh, Mr. Syed Rahim Nabi. Uh, next time I'll check out if you have the same level of football skills about you as well. So that is <laughs> that's pending. Uh, I, I can I can I can watch for for Mace Fields' uh, footballing skills, top notch. I must say. Oh, lovely, that. lovely. I can <laughs> see the dripping sarcasm in that, gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we shall do this very very soon once again. It's Kolkata Derby Week, guys. It's ATK Mohan Bagan versus East Bengal FC, a game that Darren Caldera has himself called the biggest in terms of pressure when it comes to what a player has to deal with in Indian football. And it's the first hero ISL derby with fans in the stands. So we cannot absolutely wait. There's going to be a lot of derby build-up content throughout the week that we're going to be bringing you on ISL Digital. So do tune in for that. And uh, until next time, we shall see you on the Let's Football Live show. Take care, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And Jamshedpur have won the hero ISL. Hajibad are the hero.